you know, this is the last Thursday in September. Next month, of course, is the election. And uh, for a few people, they've been thinking, oh, gosh, I'm just so sick of people talking about politics. Well, you've come to the wrong place because we're going to be talking politics and in particular, some of the the policies, some of the social policies, uh, some of the um, the party um manifestos that are being put out, what they're saying in a number of different areas. Now, fantastic work being done by the Social Policy and Parliamentary Unit of the Salvation Army. Anna Ika is a researcher as part of that team. She joins us now. Kia ora, Anna. Thank you for your time today. Malole, Andrew. Thanks for having me. You've been doing a brilliant series. Well, you and the rest of the team actually have been doing a brilliant series called Pressing Issues, looking at some of the uh, the huge issues that are affecting well, all of us here in Aotearoa, New Zealand, but especially the marginalised, especially those who are doing it toughest in amongst the uh, the financial crunch that we're all experiencing at the moment. And, I mean, each week putting out uh, just a wonderful summary of what these key issues are. Last week in particular, looking at uh, social harms, things like alcohol and gambling. This week, a focus on crime and punishment today. Day. I mean, the thing is, with all of these issues, they're all interconnected. There's not saying, OK, here's this one thing over here. One thing is a causal factor which is influenced by another, right? Yeah, absolutely, Andrew. I completely agree with you on that one. When we're looking at some of these uh, challenges that our whanau are facing, um, it's often not just an area in the justice system. It's not yeah. just an area in addictions. They're all often interlinked and connected. And one can spur on the other, or the other can spur on the other. So, so yeah, there's those relationships there that I think it's really important to understand those relationships if we're going to address them or find solutions to be able to fix those issues. Now, one area I know which is a, well, a specialist area for your research is uh, looking at crime and punishment and a definite causal link between alcohol and drug use and family violence, for example. I mean, there are some areas in the the crime and punishment area where we are doing slightly better than we have previously, certainly not the case for family violence. There's some some shockingly depressing statistics. Uh, The family home is not a safe place to be for for families and particular children, it seems. Yeah, absolutely, and that's that's really unfortunate. I mean, when we're looking at the numbers, I mean, of course, these are numbers, um, you know, behind these numbers, Andrew, are families, yep. their faces, their stories, their children. Um, yeah, but 70% of, of households that have reported family violence often have children in them. Yep. Um, and family violence has a generational impact, um, particularly when we're looking at um, the impact on educational outcomes. Um, when we're looking at uh, youth justice numbers, 80% of those who are in youth justice have experienced family violence or sexual violence. Yep. Um, and so that's often, um, yeah, it's quite challenging when we're looking at the future of our young people, when we're looking at the current state of family violence in New Zealand, which is one reported every three minutes, and that's been declining wow. every year um, for yeah for as long as we've been tracking it. Mm, gosh, that is... That is a- very disturbing indeed. Well, honestly, we should be disturbed about these sorts of numbers. How big a role does uh, drug and alcohol abuse play in these statistics? Is there, is there often an overlap there, Anna? Yeah, um, according to the... In, sorry, I'm, I'm just... Uh, I've got a lot of numbers, but I'll, I'll try and simplify it because Thank behind you. these numbers are families and stories. But um, the, the Justice, uh, the Ministry of Justice has, has reported through their... Um, a crime and victim survey is that 54 percent of those who report family violence um, often the perpetrators have been under the influence of alcohol um, or drugs and yep. so um, yeah that's more than half mm. um, of those that have reported um, family violence and so that's an indicator that actually alcohol and drugs play a huge role in um, the family violence experience in New Zealand and yet we're not doing enough um, in that space to be able to prevent um, yeah, pre- to prevent the, the abuse and the harms that are happening to our families. Is it a sector of society? Is it in particular a, a part of society that where is particular prevalence of family violence or is this something which is growing in all aspects of society? What do, What's your research showing there, Anna? You know, from our experience, we know that family violence is not discriminatory, so right. it, impacts, um, it impacts all ethnicities, yep. um, all um or you know income levels but particularly it impacts those who uh, live in high deprivation areas and um, particularly Māori and Pacifica um, particularly uh, young um, so er- 
young adults um, or young people. Um, and so, so those people are disproportionately impacted when it comes to family harm. When you're looking at the drivers of family harm, it kind of makes sense because the drivers of family harm are often, um, like I said before, addiction issues, yep. alcohol abuse, um, low educational attainment levels. Um, we're looking at uh, low employment levels. Um, and so those are often, those factors are often congregated around um, areas of high deprivation. Yep. Um, and, and so it's, it, it makes sense which is unfortunate that those are also the areas where you'd see a lot of family violence. These are families that are under so much pressure. There is so much, uh, I suppose, financial pressure on them as well, more than than I can get my head around, actually. These are the sorts of families where there is that stress, where there is that that pressure to put food on the table. There's also pressure which ends up with people self-medicating in various unhelpful ways. It is the poorest of the poor that are overrepresented in these statistics, would you say? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, a lot of our find that, like Salvation Army is an addiction service provider, and so we, we see the sharp end of it. But then also when we're looking at the families that come in for our food banks, come in for financial mentoring, um, they're also directly or indirectly impacted by alcohol harm yeah. um, as well. And then as a result, um, family violence also. Um, and so we see it right across that spectrum from this this severe side when it comes to severe addiction levels, um, but then also those indirect um, levels around, yeah, around family harm. And so, um, yeah, often when they're trying to, um, when they're faced with financial struggles or um, just struggles in life, they would often turn to um, alcohol or drugs. And so that would create like a, um, like that would, mean that there are repercussions for every other aspect of their lives. You and I have talk, spoken before about um, you know some of the some of the impacts of this on on people, and um, this is one key area I suppose where being tough on crime doesn't solve the problem. And this is something which which well across the political spectrum, you know, people have talked about being tough on crime, but being tough on crime doesn't help poor, desperate families that are trapped in this uh, this negative spiral of addiction and and abuse and violence really i mean being tough on those families that are already squeezed so hard this isn't going to solve the problem yeah i think one of the biggest um challenges that we've had during this you know during the campaign cycle is that there's re- there's a huge rhetoric around being um tough on crime but the the challenge is, is that you also need to look at what are the drivers of crime and yeah. often family violence as i mentioned before alcohol addictions um but then you also need to look at the justice system itself and so um in the pressing issue we talk about the the level of remand i mean the challenges there we talk about um the number of victims um as well and so there, there are there are different facets in the justice system that you need to look at um, but the drivers um is one of them that you need to also address you can't just be um, tough on crime in one instance, put them all into prison, yeah. and yet our prison systems are failing. Um, our remand numbers are high. Mm-hmm. We don't have enough reintegration or rehabilitation. I um, mean, so you're just creating a bigger issue. Whereas if you know, whereas if you were if you were serious about crime, you would address all those facets. You would address the drivers of crime. You would address how the actual justice system is working. But then also you would address how those who come out of the justice system are faring um, in regards to reintegrating back into society. And so it's a it's a it's a it's a um, I guess an array of things that you need to address. And um, whereas when we're looking at the policies, you know, we've got parties that just swing to one end and we've got other yep. other parties that are just swinging to the other um, where in reality if you really want to make a difference for crime I mean this is uh, it, needs but- an it needs to be a collective effort across that spectrum now, this it seems to be one of the the few uh, policy areas where there is a clear difference between the left and the right, between National Act New Zealand First on one side, uh, Labour Greens Te Pāti Māori on the other. When it comes to welfare policies, now we don't have much time to dig into this, but it seems like generalisation, uh, you've got um, on the right the party of uh, tax cuts but also benefit cuts. Uh, certainly with the Nationals um, benefit policy and um, will act in New Zealand first even stronger in this regard saying okay in order to to stop this we just need to get people off the benefits we need to to crack down on beneficiaries what's what's your response to that given uh, the work that you do the research that you've seen 
Yeah, I think, um, you know, in the Salvation Army's view, we're, we're quite disappointed to see these policies, given that a significant number of whānau that come through our doors are all beneficiaries. I think they've created a simple policy to address a really complex issue. Yeah. If we take, um, let's take emergency housing um, as an example. Um, emergency housing, if you go into emergency housing, there's there's um, requirements that, that MSD need from you for you to be able to stay in the emergency housing. And a lot of those requirements are often quite punitive. Yeah. Um, they don't take in the context or the situation that a lot of these families are in. I mean, so that that's that's a simple, I guess, policy to to try and address a complex issue mm-hmm. in regards to emergency housing. That's this that's a similar thing that New Zealand First and National are I mean, getting getting people off benefits when they're dealing with uh, so much so much trauma and um well intergenerational problems that i mean it it, it may be a, a, a an effective slogan but not necessarily an effective solution yeah i think um national news and first are pandering to a huge part of new zealand in regards to um you know you know uh talking about people that are on benefits but for a lot of the families that we support a lot of the challenges that they're facing are often really complex and isn't and won't be fixed just by getting on the job yeah. i think if um if it if it is a policy that really cares and loves about you know the poorest of the poor in new zealand they would also address and um, they would also provide support around addictions they would also provide extra support around ground level mental health services that are community based mm. um that are and that are accessible and so there's a there's a whole array of issues that should be um, provided as well as you know trying to incentivize people to get into work um, that's often it's not often that simple for a lot of the whanau that we support just to be able to provide them for with the job when there's a whole heap of complex issues um, behind them uh, and of course the challenge for Labour though is they've been the government they've been the majority government for the last uh, period of time so when we look at some of the, the negative statistics that are still out there, it would be easy to go, yes, but these policies don't seem to be working effectively either. There is a clear choice, though, I think, between the left and the right on the welfare policy issue. And and honestly, thank you for what you and the team have done with your Pressing Issues series. If people wanted to go uh, deeper into some of the, the policy comparison that we don't have time for today, uh, where's the best way to do that? Anna, how can people find out more about these important issues as they make their voting decisions? If you jump on our website, um, salvationarmy.org.nz uh, um, and just um, pop over to the Social Policy and Parliamentary Unit, which is found under the Research tab, um, and there you'll find um, yeah, there you'll find a lot of our a lot of the pressing issues that we've written. Yep. Um, but then you'll also find um, we've recorded some podcasts um, with different politicians called uh, Pathways in Politics. I'm mm-hmm. um, talking about faith and talking about pol- um, policies as well. Um, yeah, to, to try and um, yeah. Uh, inform you and your vote, um, but also just encourage everyone listening to be able to make sure that they go out there and ensure that their values are yeah. shown and um, who they vote for. We really appreciate the work that you do and for taking the time to chat with us today. SalvationArmy.org.nz. Anna, kia ora, thank you for your time today. Kia ora, thanks, Andrew.